This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043. We are with Arrow, that is A-R-O, and those are the initials for Amy Osborne. The new song is Shared Something with the Night, and yes, her last name is Osborne, and she is definitely related, but we're going to get to that later. Amy, how are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Uh, Very good. We're in New York. You're in L.A. Tell me what it's like there now. Um, It's definitely a bit post-apocalyptic. Lots of things boarded up. Lots of people staying at home. Sadly, lots of homeless people everywhere. Um, It's actually a bit sad, to be honest. The weather's lovely, which is great, but it feels a little bit like a ghost town. Yeah, because L.A. and California has been in the news a lot lately, just from the the spikes that you've been having out there. Yes, yes. And I think it's unfortunately in part due to a lot of these people having these house parties because everyone's so stir crazy and it's just not worth it, clearly. So, (laughs) Are you like me? Do you get like, do you do you walk or go somewhere and you see people without masks and you just like shake your head? I mean, well, you know what? Honestly, everyone is pretty aggro and I just try to stay in my own lane and do what I can do to help contribute to making this all go away. But um, yeah, it's disappointing. But at the same time too, I'm not looking to get into any types of confrontations with anyone. I know. It's like a a friend of mine said to somebody, a lady at a grocery store, you know, you should really have a mask on. And it turned into like a whole thing. She got like ejected from the store. And and then, you know, then, you know, somebody has a camera and they film it. And it's like, that's the last thing you want to have happen, right? I mean. Yes, yes. Um, I think everyone's pretty much on edge for their own valid reasons in their minds. And so I'm trying to avoid all of that. Yeah, good, good advice. Uh, you actually, this is, this is crazy. You had to go to the hospital right when all this was happening, I think, right? <laughs> yes. I mean, it was a standard appendectomy. My appendix basically almost ruptured and I'd been sick for a while and couldn't figure out why. And I mean, it was, I think it was almost four months. I just was sick on and off and no one could really give me any answers. And then, you know, it was pretty obvious that that's what was going on. So bad timing, but you know, I was really well taken care of and I was in and out of there within 48 hours. So. Well, that's good. But I, I mean, obviously the thoughts crossed your mind when you were going into the hospital as COVID was exploding, uh, I'm it's sure. Pretty stressful. I mean, honestly, I thought they were just going to send me home with a pain pill or something. I, you know, it, within two hours of going there, they were like, okay, we're taking you to surgery now. I was like, what is happening? Whoa. But, well, we're glad you're okay. And uh, more importantly, I love this new song, Shared Something with the Night. And for those that would expect music from the daughter of the Prince of Darkness, that music would be heavy. They will not be disappointed because this song totally rocks. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it kind of ended up heading in that way. It initially didn't start off quite as heavy, but um, I'm kind of glad that it did. <laughs> yeah, because it starts off kind of quiet and mysterious and then you know everything kicks in shortly thereafter uh the folks you worked with on this song are they the same ones that you worked with on uh raining gold and cocaine late uh cocaine style um i wrote the song with a wonderful writer called john dragonetti and then the producer billy moeller and renee arsenault are the same team that i did the other two previous songs with so um yeah pretty much uh, you just shot a video for this song, I think very recently. Uh, yeah. And it, and it was social- done in accordance yeah. with uh, all the guidelines and social yes. distancing. Yes, it was, which was initially quite stressful to try and figure out how to execute. But on the day, it was actually really pleasant and mellow and it was minimal people. And it kind of proves how little people and things and even the amount of time you need to actually make something really well done, I thought. And so it kind of, in a way, it's like, wow, are we just kind of wasting so much money in all these inflated budgets? And then, you know, but then you don't want people to not have, you know, the same careers that they had before. So I feel like when things finally do get back to normal, I feel like people will approach things a little bit more conservatively, which I think might be a good thing. I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, look, I've had those same thoughts on the people that I work with. It's like, why are we why are we in this huge building in Tribeca with all right. these floors when 
you know, when like literally like 98% of the people that worked at iHeart and Tribeca are all working from home now. Right. And yeah. Companies could save a lot of money. You know, I had, speaking of that, I had Michael Stipe on the show last week and I, I said to him, and he was also on the show with Aaron Desner of the national, I said to them, you know, if zoom existed in the eighties, nineties, early two thousands, bands would never have to go to radio stations. Yeah, it's true. It is true. I mean, I think there are like pluses and minuses to, to both realities, you know, social distancing and not social distancing. It's kind of interesting. That's why I kind of feel like maybe when all of this is over, hopefully soon, everyone will approach things somewhere in the middle. At this point, I just want to hug my mother, which I haven't yeah. done in like five <laughs> months, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, but I see her, but I just, you know, I, I stay away right. from her with the mask on and everything. Uh, when did you actually finish this song? It, it was, bef was it before COVID and you were living oh, in New yeah. York? Yeah. This song I've actually, actually wrote a long time ago and I finished it a while ago. And when I signed my deal with Make Records, we kind of went through my whole library of stuff. And, you know, everyone on the team there just kept going back to this one track. And I kind of battled them on it a little bit because, you know, for me, I've lived with it for, you know, four years now. And I was just like, really? Okay, okay, you sure? Because, you know, as an artist, when you get too close to the material and you're too involved, you lose your ears for it. So you don't necessarily hear things about the track that other people were here. So yeah, let's, and, let's, know, let's remix it again. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm constantly thinking about how I could have done it better or maybe I should have done, you know, this sample here or changed this version, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's just crazy um, artist stuff. But uh, yeah, they were all really adamant that this was definitely the best single to release and I'm glad I trusted them, so. And you wrote this in New York. Uh, how long were you living in New York? Um, I was living in New York for a couple of years. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think I was a bit, kind of a little bit intimidated by the city at the time. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like New York's a scary place to go when you're in your kind of early 20s and figuring out who you are. Um, definitely made some questionable decisions in <laughs> retrospect. But Come on, you were in your 20s. Helped. Who doesn't? I know, true, but then it helped me develop into who I am today, so I guess it can't be that bad. Um, was the plan, once uh, this song was uh, completed and you were getting set to release it, was the plan to actually go out and perform some, some oh, shows? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and, you know, I was so excited about touring, and, you know, I had my band together, and, you know, rehearsals were about to start, and, you know, I'm not, I'm one of, many hundreds of millions of people that had their plans completely turned upside down this year. So it's unfortunate, but at the same time too, I'm really trying to embrace the live streaming and we're in rehearsals for that. And I'm excited about recording that and getting that out there. So all good things. So you actually had a tour booked then? Um, yes, pretty much. And um, from what I understand, we have a couple of shows tentatively booked for 2021, but it's still so up in the air yet. And I think if anything, it's more of a motivation for a lot of bands, even if they are able to book stuff that won't necessarily happen. I think just to know that that is a possibility is, is a positive thing. So Yeah, it is. And uh, boy, 2021, as long as it's safe and healthy, is going to be crazy. Oh, Ev yeah. <laughs> everybody's going to be out there with, you know, two new albums and, you know, tour dates mm -hmm. booked for five years. Are there yeah. more songs completed uh, with this? Um, yeah, I have a whole, I have a whole completed album. So I'm slowly but surely going to be yeah. releasing some of the tracks. And because um, I, I don't know how I feel about releasing a whole album at once necessarily. I don't know if many people are in that zone anymore of sitting there and listening to a whole body of work. I kind of like to intermittently let stuff out and let, let it kind of sit with people and get excited for the next thing. And I kind of feel like that's the new normal now anyway. So. Hey, was there one artist or band perhaps when, or maybe you were even much younger that really sort of inspired you to say to yourself, well, wow, music is definitely something I want to pursue. Like, what was the moment you said to yourself, okay, I get it. I have to do this, if there was oh, one. Hands down, it was Portishead, Massive Attack, Tricky, Kate Bush, Peter Gabriel, Talking Heads. I mean... I just used to, I mean, I was a real kind of loner in my teens. I would sit in my room for hours with my disco ball light, listening to <laughs> all my favorite bands and just kind of, you know, 
creating this inner world in my head to all of these incredible songs and artists. And, um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say I was a stereotypical teen as far as the type of music that I liked. I liked stuff a little bit more avant-garde and ethereal, a little darker, grittier. PJ Harvey was a massive influence. And so, you know, I kind of very much still to this day live in that world. So. Who are you loving these days? Hmm. I'm trying to think who I'm loving these days. I really like this young artist that I found called Clara. She's really great. She reminds me of like a modern day luscious Jackson in a way. She's pretty cool. I'm trying to think of someone else. I really love this band called more. Um, they kind of remind me of like a, a new tears for fears, but a little bit more mellow and a little bit cooler. I don't know. They're great. They're a local band. And then I'm trying to think of someone else. Um, I've been listening to a lot of old soul lately. Oh, okay. That's kind of come back around. Um, it's always a good thing. Bit of Sly and the Family Stone didn't hurt anyone. So. Oh man, so <laughs> um, good. Yeah, yeah. So, I've, you know, for me, it's always all over the place. I love to dip in to different kind of genres and times of when specific music was really kind of at the forefront. But um, my playlists are absolutely nuts. They're all over the place. Her name is Amy Osborne. The band is Arrow. The new song, Shared Something With The Night. Uh, Amy, I want to ask you, I mean, one can only imagine the amount of incredibly talented artistic people that you've been exposed to in your, in your young life. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and maybe some of these people were even like in your house at some point. Uh, and I have these visions of you and your life that like, here's a crazy one. I have this crazy fantasy that like, Tony Iommi made you breakfast or something? Um, I think he's made me a cup of tea here and there. I don't know about breakfast, although I'm sure he would. He's very lovely. He's the best, right? So uh, lovely. Your fans and your listeners uh, and our listeners actually love stories and anecdotes like that. Mm -hmm. Stories about our rock idols, our rock gods. Do you have one in particular that comes to mind immediately where you say to yourself, wow, I can't believe that happened? Um, well, you know, for me, I, I see these people in a totally different environment. And, you know, although I have an awareness for who they are and what they've achieved and who other people kind of see them as when you're in kind of more of an intimate everyday setting, you just see the, the regular person version of those people. Um, you know, so yes, I've seen, you know, any, Everyone from David Bowie, Marilyn Manson, um, Billy Corgan, um, Billy Idol. I mean, you know, I've, I've kind of been around all these people for most of my life. And, you know, they are just, there's not been one horrendous experience. They're all just the loveliest, super sensitive, really invested in being like the authentic and incredible artists that they are. But as an example, right before this interview, my dad text me and he said, Hey, can you make sure that you make the special icing for my cakes? Because, you know, I have some friends coming over and I really like the way you make the tea and this and that. And I was like, sure, dad. And he has some of his musician friends coming over later. So, you know, it's just like everyday stuff. Most parents would probably ask their kids or adult kids to do stuff like that for them. So, you know, there's not one particular thing that sticks out other than, you know, everyone's just human and really sweet. So, so uh, I wanted to ask you and sort of just make an observation that, you know, when you decided not to be part of the reality TV show a long time ago, mm -hmm. I had a lot of respect for you for doing that because I don't know how old you were. You were either 15 or 16, but I, you, I totally related to like, hey, I don't want cameras in my face 24 seven. I mean, I totally got why you did that. Yeah, I, you know, for me, I had grown up around having a pretty well-known dad anyway. And, you know, I still, I always really valued my privacy within that family. And um, for me personally, and for who I am, you know, as far as morally, and also just to give myself a chance to actually develop into a human being, as opposed to just being remembered for being a teenager, it didn't really line up with what I saw my future as. And, you know, it definitely worked great for the rest of my family. But for me and, and who I am, I just knew it was never something that I would have been able to consider realistically. So 
I think that was quite an adult type thought for somebody who was 15 or 16, you know? Weirdly, I think I was more mature then than I am now. <laughs> I've got a bit uh, of bent button in reverse or something. I don't know. I get more ridiculous as I get older. So. Amy Osborne is with us. Her new band, Arrow. Uh, actually, not new band. They've been around for a few years. And a, a new song is Shared Something with the Night, which we're going to play here on the show in a, in a minute or two. How is your dad doing? How's his health? Is everything okay? Is he doing well, yeah. I hope? Yeah, he's doing incredible. Um, you know, he's swimming for two hours a day. He's got a killer suntan. He's writing incredibly. You know, it's a little stir crazy for all of us because we're all pretty much locked down over here. Um, but yeah, he's he's doing great. So well, we're, we're happy to hear that. Uh, there's a a new documentary coming out, The Nine Lives of Ozzy. Have Have you seen it? Do you are you in it? No, no, I I don't really know much about that, but um, I'm sure it'll be great. It's coming out on A&E, I guess, uh, in September. Uh, anyway, Amy, a pleasure to speak with you. Really great connecting with you. And uh, congratulations on this new song. Uh, we're going to play it right now. And listen, what I want is I want to see your band. You know, I know you played the Mercury Lounge. I know you played Union Pool back in the day. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see you uh, on a stage in New York City sometime very soon. Thank you. Me too. I hope, I hope that's sooner rather than later. <laughs> Well, 2021. I mean, I can wait yep. till then. But, Fingers uh, crossed. <laughs> Amy, thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Thank you. This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043.